What's up, everybody? I am here with Kevin Connors. Kevin is back in the building at Premium. For those of you that don't know Kevin, he's worked with so many BMX brands, everyone from cinema to Etnies to he spent the last couple of years working with Fiend. Now Kevin uh, actually started, I think, the majority of his BMX career working in, at Haro and Premium, and he's back in the building now. And there's a lot of new changes in store at Premium, and I thought it made sense to talk to Kevin about them. Kevin, is that accurate? That is definitely true. That's pretty much how it happened. Back around full cycle, circle. So I believe you were actually instrumental in initially starting Premium. Is that correct? Yeah. When I came on originally, I didn't start it. It had already been started probably, say, about a year and a half, maybe, prior to me working here previously. And Joe Riley and Matt Kolish and all those guys, Ben Huckey, all those guys were already there with the groundwork. And Pete Demos, who is still the art director here now again, is actually the guy who started Premium. And essentially the at the forefront of the reason he started was he got tired of just making the same old parts for Dave and everyone else on Haro. And he was into doing the more street side, the more core side that Joe Riley and all those guys were a part of. So he saw the opportunity at the time, you know, to take advantage of Haro's backing and what, you know, Haro's groundwork had already been there and the knowledge in the industry to start something cool and fun. And that's basically what he did. And then kind of right around the same time, Ryan Mills started getting flow from premium. I got brought into premium and Haro as doing sales. And then it quickly evolved to learn how to shoot photos, to going on team trips, to working on the video with you, Kyle, that you did and helping with team management stuff and down the road. So we're talking about some pretty cool routes here. You just announced that Colin Varniak's on the team, which is exciting. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of the stuff in between what you're talking about and Colin getting on just seems a little bit messy to me. Premium kind of started as this cool core street brand led by Josh Harrington. We did a full video. Um, you know, parts were cool. There were riders on like Garrett Reynolds and Dan Foley, and there was just a lot of excitement. And then they kind of started making complete bikes, and it seemed like there wasn't really new products, and it seemed like that fire kind of fizzled. Then there's kind of a team. The team's mostly kind of am dudes right now, you know? Um, so so what, how did we get from point A to, I guess we're at point C now? Yeah, I think the, the sad truth of it is, is admitting what the sad truth is, right? I mean, let's face it. Josh had Garrett, he had JJ, he had Ty. That was, I mean, at the time, that was the team, period. Joe Riley was still involved. It was, that's the way it should have been, and that's what everybody wanted it to be. Unfortunately, there was always a balancing act, I feel like, between people understanding what Josh's real vision for it was and what the team's real vision for it was, and the disconnect at the office at the time, you know, I mean, to bring up Mira, one of the big disconnects is Pete Demos, who is the art director here now again, when Mira started Mirico, Pete left to work for Mira because that's his boy. That's, that's family to him. So, you know, all of a sudden you have the guy that started premium and had the love and the heart for it and the drive behind it. He's gone. So then you're left to the devices of other people's opinions and what they see. And I feel like at the time, and I totally have nothing but respect for the people that were here in those places. And I learned stuff from them, but they were more into the contest scene and a different scene. So them rationalizing and understanding what Garrett and Josh and Ty and JJ and Joe Riley all wanted for premium and strived and knew it should be, it should have been, it just started slowly dwindling. And then over the years, there's just this weird displacement of there was never really the right person or group of people involved to fully see the vision of what it can and should have been. You know, it was right on that cusp of being how it, you know, it was there. It was right there at one point. And I think that just, it took a major backtrack with, you know, with certain products, certain people not really understanding what they fully needed, you know, all of a sudden BMX wanted lightweight products and you got the wrong person involved and they think it's a good idea to make a frame that's under four pounds. I mean, that's, you know, do the math on that one. That's not a great scenario. So I think, you know, the, 
at the root of it all is you can't fix anything if you know what, unless you know what's wrong. So for me now, it's, I've spent years knowing what was wrong with it. I, I mean, there's a laundry list of things that, you know, were disconnects or little things, but then there was things along the way that were also, wow, that's pretty cool. That's actually not a bad idea. Just not fully executed the way it should have been with the riders back, backing it and fully supporting it. So I feel like, you know, it, it's kind of a snowball effect. Every, you know, something starts rolling downhill in the wrong direction. It takes a lot to uplift it and change it. And Joey became the TM a couple of years ago and slowly started making those changes. But one person can't do that. It takes a lot more than one person to do anything. So Joey's essentially the team manager, but I know you have a ton of input on everything. Before we really dive into the team, yep. let's talk about the product side of things. So Premium was making complete bikes and frames, and it's my yep. understanding going forward, it's going to be a parts company. Those are a, things, a thing of the past. So what, yep. what's, the focus, yep. what's the focus going forward? Yeah, so basically the focus going forward is all those, the Premium complete bikes that are there now, there's nothing wrong with them. They're great bikes. Those will be done at the end of the year. So those will be the last premium bikes. You know, forever, the thought process behind premium completes was, oh, well, you know, maybe somebody wants a premium complete or a different shop could do better with premium completes or, you know, a more core shop could do better with a premium complete than a Haro complete, which I understand that philosophy, but you can't do everything. There's a reason why not every company does everything. So moving forward, the thought process is no frames, no complete bikes. So moving forward, what you're going to see is a complete rebuild. Everything right now, all the way down to Chad's stem, which I would that pretty much anybody can look at that stem, even myself who have helped design stems with some of the best riders in the world and some of my closest friends over the last few years. I look at that stem and I'm like, there's truly nothing really wrong with it. It's strong and it holds up. But I see a few things that could make it better and cooler. So even like Chad's stem, we already have new samples coming to Chad's stem, you know, Chad's fork. We don't ever have really any problems with that. And it's got a two date offset there. It's in best cast, but me and Chad just spent the better part of the last two weeks completely redesigning his forks. So absolutely every aspect of premium hard, good wise, soft, good wise, branding wise, everything is going to be cleaned up and, brought into the modern times because i think that's just it you know there's a lot of stuff that's there that was designed four years ago and four years ago it wasn't bad but that was four years ago and what's been done now you know but then there is some newer items like joey worked on a grip with chad that's about to come out probably in the next three months that i just put a bike a pair on my bike and they feel amazing it's felt they honestly they feel really good so there's stuff like that. There's items like Mike Gray's trestle cranks that, you know, I pulled them out when I first started working here and put them on my bike. They look great. They're strong cranks. But for the most part, you're going to see every part is going to be gone and rebuilt. There's not going to be any more stems with holes in them or any funky business like that. You know, moving forward, basically, I got to take what, you know, give Garrett a shout out here. I got to take what he always taught me. If the rider doesn't think it's right, it doesn't matter what I think as a designer. The rider needs to ride it. They need to love it or it's not right. So moving forward, I got to take that hard-headed goal onto premium and make sure that at the end of the day, if Chad Stem comes in and I love it and put it on my bike and Chad puts it on his bike and says it's one millimeter off, then it's wrong. It's not right. It needs redone again. So you're going to see everything being done exactly how the current riders – Colin and any new riders that get put on exactly what they want, especially with a signature product. You know, I'm working on numerous signature products already with Colin that, you know, I know Colin, I know he's anal about product like I am. And I look forward to that. I know if I don't completely please him, he's going to tell me. And that's, you know, I really feel like that's what's needed here. So essentially when you have a whole parts line, you can essentially have a different brand frame and premium everything else. We'll get to that point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's almost, I mean, you know, frankly, the, I've been here nine months and secretly working on stuff, waiting for Colin and other riders, waiting for stuff to solidify before we really pulled the plug on stuff. I mean, there's already 
wheels in play with using free coaster technology that you're starting to see from other brands slowly trickling down. There's already riders on these items. You know, there's wheels, there's, a, there's already samples of darn near everything sitting in my office or on the way to being here. So we've definitely started that process. And that is what you'll see is it will be everything short of a frame. Putting that into a perspective from every other riders watching this, you have these samples sitting in your office. Realistically, yeah. when when <laughs> should these when should these products actually be available for people to, to buy and to ride? Thanks to COVID, not as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's weird because like so the sample process takes a long time. For instance, I'll use Chad's new fork as a starting point. I obviously, because of past employments and all the riders I've worked with, I know what forks hold up so there were certain things i wanted to do to a fork there were certain things chad wanted to do certain things he liked about his old ones that he wanted to include so right now chad just got on that sample fork three weeks ago until i even consider placing an order for it he needs to ride it for at least 90 days it needs to be as beat up looking as possible it needs to come back to me and make sure that everything on it is exactly straight there's no stress or anything to it. And then from there, you order, you know, you place your production order. And, you know, generally it used to be 45, 60 days. Now, because of COVID, I mean, it's 90 to 120 days at best. It's, it's starting, you know, every morning starts with that challenge of finding out something's taking longer than it should because of COVID. It seems like the ultimate excuse in life right now. But, you know, I mean, I always tell everyone, from the second a rider and a designer start working on anything on a blank slate, you're 12 months to 14 months out before that is readily available. You're nine months out before the general public might catch a glimpse of it. So it really is about a year to year and a half until the idea presents itself, be it on a bar napkin or a computer, to it being shipped out to a consumer. So... You kind of hinted at some signature parts with Colin. Obviously, there's more yeah. in the works with Chad and Mike Gray. So there's a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon product-wise. How about team-wise? So I know you got a couple new guys coming out soon. Um, I, you told me you're not ready to announce those yet. Yeah. So it's which one is, of those weird scenarios, <laughs> right? Where it's like, where it's like, I think you know we might have started talking to Colin over a month ago, and it was pretty much a done deal for a month. But it's like you got to kind of. You got it. Colin, Colin needed to go ride with Chad and Joey. You got to feel everybody out. And we, there is already, there's already two riders that, you know, I've worked with or shot photos with, or me or Joey have worked with, Colin and Chad have worked with that are already, they're on, fully on. But do you just stay in an Instagram post that they're on? You know, I mean, the whole idea is coming up with, you know, Colin might have not done the ender for a video part for his intro. But there was a little bit of backing and a little bit of a cool idea behind it, you know, and that's the whole thing. Moving forward, there's already a budget for three to four team trips, other possible, you know, no full length video, obviously, in the works or anything like that. But maybe some mixtapes in the work, other projects, you know, we're going to go on a trip here in just four weeks. So there's already stuff in the works. So why would we rush to the masses to say, hey, we put person X and person X on and, you know, just that's it. It's like, let's wait and do a proper intro to them, be it in through an edit or through an, a cool Instagram post or whatnot. It needs to have backing and it needs to have feeling behind it or it's not useful. I think you should announce it now because I asked you nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I already told so, you all the cuff. <laughs> so... Team trips, team videos in the works, uh, new product in the works. Uh, you know, it seems like everything's heading in the right direction, and it seems like premium really kind of needed this reboot. Yep. Realistically, realistically, where do you see the brand in five years? In five years? Well, I realistically hope all of us are sitting here still, all of us that are involved, because that was, you know, from the game plan when, you know, I'm not the TM, but I think I can speak a little bit for Joey in that we have similar thought processes in that, like, you don't want a short-term rider. Like, why do you want somebody that you're like, they're the next best thing. We can sign a year contract and then they'll probably be gone. It's like, no, we both told Colin, like, we don't want you on just to be on. Like, we want you to stay a part of this. You know, take, 
you know, yes, premium is owned by Haro, but take Haro, for example, Matthias, Nyquist, Dennis, Chad. Chad's been on Haro or premium since he's been, what, 14 or 15, maybe 13? Nobody, nobody here wants a short-term rider. Everybody wants to build that relationship and grow with them over the years. Yes, there's always hiccups over, you know, hiccups over the dinner table here and there, but everybody wants to learn from those hiccups and grow and continue growing. So in five years, my hopes honestly are that, you know, together as the team, me and Joey and everybody here, along with the riders, that we all build something that premium was prior and was on the cusp to greatness. And we build it so that way, Josh Harrington, who I'm still friends with, I hope in five years he calls me and is like, dude, it's dope that you guys got that back together. You know, I want it to be exactly what the riders that are part of it now, the new guys coming on, I want it to be exactly what we all want it to be. It needs to be good quality products for street riding mixed with a lot of fun. I mean, if you're not having fun, there's no point of BMX. That's, that's what it is. They're and you little, come They're little kids' bikes at the end of the day. You know, and you can hold up and that's that's what it is and you can confidently say you feel like you're being given the tools to make that happen oh yeah absolutely and i think you know that's one of the one of the biggest aspects to this you know like for instance when me and colin first taught sat down to talk about products you know he's like well what is possible to do signature i'm like what well, what do you want you know and joking around he's like maybe a pedal a tire and a grip and i'm like okay cool you know, and I think he was blown away that I was like, yeah, no, let's do it, you know. And, and I think that was also over the years is that, you know, premium is part of Haro, yes. But over the years, it was a little bit too migrated, whereas now it's like, here's your budget. Here's your company. Do what you need to do. Here's the other budget. Here's the other company. Do what you need to do. So now it's given the platform to succeed, which it needs which is good, whether it be Joey with the team management position, having the right backing in the office, having the years and years of knowledge of different products Haro has either messed up or hit the nail on the head with, you know, having the, all that knowledge and background and history to play with is it's a recipe for something good to happen. Kevin, this all sounds great. Hopefully you're able to deliver what you're talking about. Is there anything else you want to add before I let you go here? Oh, I hope I deliver too, because the riders on the team are some of my best best friends. And, you know, the last thing I'll ever do is put myself or a rider like Colin or Chad that I'm super close with ever in harm's way or anything like that. So that is the objective is to make sure that they are happy, their bikes are strong and last and ride exactly how they want them to be. So, yeah, like you asked, that's basically what you'll see is better product out of premium, stronger stuff that the riders truly want under their feet and feels good under their feet. And there's not going to be any exceptions to that. Kevin, that sounds awesome. Thank you for the time and no uh, looking, for looking forward to see what the future brings from premium and you and the boys. Sounds good. Me too. It should be fun. All right. I'm now joined with Colin Vyroniak, the newest member of the premium team. Colin, you had your animal for a long time. Um, you grew up on the East Coast. It's kind of an iconic brand that you've almost been the face of for the past number of years here. What made you actually want to make this change and switch over to a brand like premium that's kind of, you know, we don't really know what the future holds for. What, what, what made you want to dive into that? Um, well, honestly, it really just comes down to, you know, looking forward as, as I get older. Um, you know, I want to be a part of something. I want to grow something and, and I want to be active more than anything. Um, and kind of for the past, I'd say three years on animal, we, we haven't done much. Our last trip was the animal house LA, which was about three years ago. And, and since then things have been, you know, extremely stagnant and kind of just felt like we're, we're treading water. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously a super, super huge fan of animal and everything they've done over the past. And, you know, to, to have been a part of that brand and been able to do, you know, everything I wanted to do with that brand is, you know, I, I mean, I'm still blown away. I still kind of can't believe it. But, you know, looking forward, uh, it just it didn't really seem like, you know, we, we were going to be able to do anything in the near future. Um, and that was one of the things I talked to Ralph about. You know, he was he, the owner of Animal. He was one of the first people I talked to uh, when the, the offer was presented. And, um, you know, even, even he was very understanding. And, and he, he even said, you know, look, 
I, I don't really know when we're going to be able to do more. And it, it just kind of, you know, that was, that was the main reason I'd say why I wanted to do something else was just, I want to do something, you know, and I hadn't been doing anything in such a long time. And it kind of felt like I was a part of something, but I really wasn't a part of something. And, uh, you know, premium being an hour away from my house, you know, I, I can drive up there at any point. Um, also, you know, I'm good friends with Chad. Him being a part of the brand is, was a huge incentive for me because I love hanging out with him. I've only been on one trip with Chad, and it was when uh, Cinema and Fiend did like a cross trip. And it was probably one of the funnest trips for me because that's Chad's somebody I like to be on a trip with. We, we kind of share the same energy. We like to hang out. We vibe. And, uh, you know, it just, it just seemed like overall, like, you know, now we're, we, we have trips planned. We have new parts in the works. Um, there, there's there's something to work towards or something to grow. And it just, I don't know. It just, it seemed like it is the best move for me looking forward. Kevin made it sound like there are already signature parts in the works with you. So what was it like to already have that, you know, already have that in motion so soon? Yeah, that was one of the incentives, you know, was, was the ability to, you know, premium hasn't made new parts in a really, really long time. Um, you know, and even animal, we, we haven't been able to make new parts, you know, I'd say in the last five years, so it's kind of one of those things, BMX progresses, it evolves, things change, um, you know, and, and to have the ability to create signature parts and design them exactly the way I want to make them feel the way I want. Um, you know, it's just, it seemed like, you know, it's almost too good to be true at first, you know, because they're, they, they want to give me signature tires, signature grips, like all the things I've kind of always dreamed of having, you know, they're like, look, you know, we, we can do these things. We have a budget for these things. Like it's, it's all there. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm really excited, honestly. I know this decision wasn't necessarily driven by money. I know there's actually passion involved, but I do know one thing I always respect about you is how hard you work to keep the BMX flame alive. Um, I know that you are always kind of doing odds and ends just to kind of keep it moving the best you can. Is this putting you in a situation where you can spend more time on your bike? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of, it's as much as I, I don't like I you know it's like it's not about money it's not about money the reality of it is, is as you get older you know you have um your needs change you know the the 15 16 year old kid uh versus you know the the adult it's, it's just it's just a lot different your needs are a little bit different so this is definitely uh putting me in a position where you know I can ride a little bit more full-time whereas for the past couple years um you know I've just been working like part-time trying to hustle as much as I can to try to keep everything afloat um, this is just, it just puts me in a way better position to kind of, like you said, keep riding. And that's, you know, as, as you get older, you realize that's the dream is to kind of, you know, keep it going for as long as you can keep it going. So I'm, I'm definitely excited about that. So what is the next move? Kevin mentioned there should be a trip, I think before the end of the year. Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, we already have a couple trips that we're talking about planning for this year. We're already starting in December. I think like the first week of December, we're going to go on a trip up to San Jose. It's not going to be a really long trip, but, um, yeah, we're, we're getting to work right away with content, um, planning and it just, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'd, I'd say I'm more of like, uh, especially the older I get, I like things to be organized. I like things to be set in stone so I can plan for things accordingly. It also helps, you know, with the way everything's set up in my life where I do kind of have to work. Um, and it's just awesome to be a part of something where, you know, there is some structure behind everything and there is planning and there is, you know, as much as I think some riders don't like it when they uh, have to meet certain guidelines or deadlines or things like that, the older I get, I kind of like that. To me, it's, it's, it's motivating. It keeps you on top of your stuff, keeps you on top of your game. Um, you know, I think if I could compare it to anything that I've ever had to do BMX wise in my life, it would be like the X game drill street where we only had a set amount of time to film a part. And, you know, personally, I liked that. I liked that idea of like, no, you have to do this now. You have to get this done. This is priority. Um, it's just to me, I, I think I work better under that little bit of pressure, you know? So it, it's cool. Not that there's any pressure whatsoever, like over at premium, you know, they're, they're super, everything seems like it's going to be super fun, super, you know, how we want it. To, to grow how we want things to be, you know, we're going to have a, a huge say in that, which was also a huge, uh, a huge factor in why I wanted to do it. But, but uh, yeah, no, I, I really think that, um, you know, looking forward, it, it's cool. It's cool to be a part of something like this. Well, I'm openly critical. Uh, I have been openly critical of premium in the past. 
And after yep. talking to Ke- after talking to Kevin and talking to you, it seems like there is a whole lot of optimism going on. It seems like the future actually looks pretty great. Yeah, I mean, b- between Kevin and Joey over there, you know, I've worked with with Kevin for for years over at Fiend, working on parts. So you know, we're able to 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 communicate extremely well. He lives right down the road from me, and Joey is super super motivated. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the ad, but that was completely his idea to do that at the bus stop to shoot the photo and get everything printed, put it up. And honestly, something like that, you know, it's like, it's cool to see somebody's passion, you know, and Joey was passionate about doing that and making that happen. And, you know, it was almost like less stress on the rider where I think for an average company, like, Hey, you know, go film a part, which is awesome. But you know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stress on the rider, um, which is, you know, it's, it's cool to see, um, you know, it's cool to see somebody who, who wants to make something work and they want to grow it. And I think both of those dudes are, are really happy with their position over there and they have a really good idea and vision for what they want the future of premium to be. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's just, it's, it's all positive. There were so many reasons this, like this was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make hands down because of my passion for animal. And, you know, like I grew up idolizing the brand and, all those dudes had a huge influence on my riding, you know, Jared Washington, Edwin, um, Steven Hamilton, like it's, you know, the list goes on and on, but, um, you know, it, it, when it, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, uh, you know, you can only do this for so many years. And, you know, it's just, like I said, the past three years, I've kind of just been treading water, hoping, hoping, you know, maybe I'd have an opportunity to film, maybe I'd have an opportunity to go on a trip, but you know, it's, as time progressed, it just kind of, you know, I realized that nothing, nothing was going to happen. And like I said, talking to Ralph and everything and him being very understanding of the situation and, and the opportunity, uh, it made things a little bit easier. Colin, thank you for the time. That sounds awesome. Really excited for the future here. Is there anything more you would like to add? No, no, I just, uh, just huge shout out to Joey, um, for, for reaching out and making everything happen. And, and, uh, I'm just excited to get to work.